Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and in this playlist uh, we were covering each and everything about React. So we are on the halfway. We have covered the basic fundamentals. Then we have covered the React lifecycle methods which are latest ones. Now in this video we are going to cover, uh, we are going to have a quick recap about uh, React lifecycle methods and then we will talk about React router. So that React router is the next thing which we are going to get started with. Okay. Before that, we are just going to talk about very basics uh, about these React routers. So we will have a quick recap about the lifecycle methods. Then we will get started with React routers and then we will start writing some demo applications. Okay. So we have covered each and every phase of React uh, lifecycle methods, which is like mounting, updating and unmounting. Okay. Uh, we also did console log. We try to see which particular method is executing and why that particular method is getting executed. So if I just try to minimize it and show you, these are less common, less common methods. I mean, these are like most common lifecycle methods. We know that constructor, render and component did mount, right? Then you are updating the state. Then it is directly getting called component did update. Render is happening, right? Because should component update and all these component uh, derived state from props is like really less common methods. We don't write them often in a very, very basic or simple application. So these are like uh, most suitable methods we write. So we are uh, we see these methods a lot while writing the code. If you see these less common lifecycle methods, then these are the that in the picture get derived state from props should component update get snapshot before update so here we'll talk about this render phase so pure and has no side effect may be opposed aborted or restarted by react okay so these set of met methods where you are actually rendering then get derived state from props and then render method these are like pure methods not doing anything uh, related to making an api call getting the data and all these things are not there but like uh, here commit phase here you can work with DOM and run side effects, schedule updates and all. Because here we are talking about component did mount and component did update, right? So here we can run side effects. Pre-commit phase where we can read the DOM. So we have already talked about it, talked about it how this get snapshot before update is being used. This is actually used to evaluate the 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 DOM which is going to be based on the, the new and previous props and state. Okay, so you are actually coming to know, okay, this is my uh, UI is going to be, so do I need to make any particular action to accommodate that change which is coming up? So in that case, we can just read that previous state of UI using uh, get snapshot before update, before, even after render method has been triggered. So I mean, the render has been triggered, but the, the changes has not been applied. So this get snapshot before update can be used to just check the UI, uh, check the UI snapshot. It actually passed the UI snapshot to component did update method. Okay, so this is like a quick uh, recap we are having. Uh, if we just talk about the, these particular methods, you can go to the description and you can understand what this get derived state from props because this is a buzzword in the lifecycle methods. If you talk about lifecycle, then this is one of the most important methods because we have replaced uh, component will receive props, component will mount, component did update, component uh, did update, yeah. So these are three, four lifecycle methods we have removed and now we have this get derived state from props, which is deriving the state from the props which component is rece receiving from the parent component. Okay, so here we can just see get snapshot before update. What it is doing is it is accepting the previous props, previous state, and you already have access to current state and current props. Based on that, you can decide something and you can pass the snapshot to the component did update method. Here you will, so like here you are calculating the scroll height. Once the new UI change is coming up, then you just calculate the snapshot and you are passing that snapshot to the component did update method. Okay, I'm not going through. I mean, you can just go, just check the documentation because it is, detailed enough to understand all these things should component update is just returning true and false and here you can decide do you want to uh, refresh or re-render the component if it is returning false then nothing will happen i mean you change your state nothing will happen no re-rendering will be uh, happening in that case 
component will unmount is still there which is getting executed whenever you are actually removing the component from the DOM node. And we have this component did update and component did mount. Component did mount invokes immediately after when you are done with the render, right? So earlier we used to have a component will uh, mount all these methods. Now we just have a component did mount. So whenever you uh, whenever you want to make a side effect, whenever you want to make a XHR call, then component did mount is the right uh, method to do that because component has been rendered. We are not blocking the rendering. Now you are triggering some external call, getting the data and setting the state from there. Okay, you may call set state immediately in the component in mount, it will trigger an extra rendering cycle, right? Because you have already rendered something, now you have to change the UI based on the data you are receiving in component in mount. Component did update, it invokes immediately after the updation occurs, right? So there is a sequence should component update, render, and then, uh, then we have this method get snapshot before update and then we have a component did update so component did update method is uh, getting the snapshot if you wanted to if you are getting some snapshot in that case you can do something otherwise with the with the based on the previous props you can just check if uh, the particular change has happened or not okay constructor is simple it's like es6 class constructor uh, it is getting initialized with the class instance and it is getting called it can be used to initialize the set state, set state, okay? Obviously, you will not be doing set state inside the constructor. Instead, you need to have a local state assigned. So here we are doing initialization and here we are doing a, a this binding for the DOM events, okay? So here, uh, this is a common mistake which people do is what we do is we are actually assigning the direct props to a particular state. Okay, I mean you have to access the props using this dot prop dot color. Here, so these are the different lifecycle methods. Uh, you can actually have a look. So this is a simple component. These are the different lifecycle methods for mounting. We have a constructor, get derived state from props, render, component did mount, phase one. Okay, you can still use this component will un unmount, component will receive props, but you have to use unsafe and they will be deprecated and will be moved away. Then we have updation lifecycle. Here we are again calling get derived state from props, should component update, render, get snapshot before update and component did update. These two methods are now deprecated. So you have to use unsafe, component will receive props and component will update. It, uh, earlier it was here, component will update, now it is gone. We have get snapshot before update and component will unmount is still there and for error handling this is important one these two methods has been added error handling which is get derived state from error and component did catch catch so in the previous set of videos we talked about how we can create an error boundary so if any error occurred then how can we actually handle it using these two methods we can set some kind of error state and we can prevent the rendering of the child components components when any error occurred so you will just show your custom message whenever there is any error coming from any child component. So get derived state from error and component did catch can be used for logging. This particular method can be used to update a error state. If any error is coming coming and based on the error state, you can choose to render or not to render the children components. Okay, other APIs are still there like set state and force update. Set state is actually triggering the update life cycles. Force update is also triggering the update lifecycle, but it is not going to call should component update. It is like forcing you to render no matter what should component update is returning. Class properties, you still have a default props and the display name in the class properties. Instance properties, we have a this dot props dot some property, this dot state dot some uh, property. So we have, I mean, state and props are not going anywhere. That is the, the main backbone of React. Props is being used to pass the data from parent to child component. State is something which is mutable. Whenever the state is getting changed, update lifecycle is getting triggered and you see some changes on the UI. If you are not overriding the should component update to return as a false. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone. So from next video, what we are going to do is we will start React Router. And in the React Router, we will talk about 
what is react router how to set the react router how we can create a single page application for our future demo applications thanks everyone